Um, people family. People. It's a people family. Oh, okay. And cats or dogs? Oh, it's a it's a people cat family. Oh. And what does that mean? Oh, there's people and there's people and there's a cat. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You have the feeling that this interview isn't going very well? <laughs> no, no, I think it's going fine. Yeah, this is my first interview. What would happen if I put ice down your shirt? Um, something bad might happen. Mm -hmm. Something bad like me throwing the camera at you. That would be bad. Okay, it says tape end, so we're going to have to be going now. Thank you for the time, and we'll see you in the championships. Goodbye, fans. the Trans-Appalachian West. It's where most of the population is at this point. On the 4th of July, 1778, he took the first British fort, Kaskaskia, without firing a shot. The French townspeople were bewildered. Americans had been their enemies in the French and Indian War. Now that France had entered the War of Independence, Clark brought them the news that they were now allies. Nothing could excel the confusion these people seemed to be in. Being taught to expect nothing but savage treatment from the Americans, given all for lost, they were willing to be slaves to save their families. George Rogers Clark. Cahokia fell, followed by the town of Vincennes and its Fort Sackville. Then Clark set to the task of pacifying thousands of Indian chiefs and warriors. Clark is a consummate Indian hater, but at the same time is very effective at negotiating with uh, the native people that he comes in contact with in, in the Ohio country. He sort of adopts the role of the warrior rather than the diplomat, and he kind of blusters about about how strong he is and about how his men are warriors, and talks to them as a fellow warrior as opposed to a peacemaker. But while Clark negotiated with the Indians, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Hamilton swept down from his fort in Detroit with 500 Indians, British troops, and loyalists. Hamilton was known as the hair buyer because of the hundreds of scalps he had purchased from Indian war parties. Without firing a shot, he recaptured Vincennes and its Fort Sackville. His actions prompted Clark to undertake a legendary winter journey he and his men would cross flooded prairies and lowlands to surprise Hamilton at Vincennes. They could not suppose we should be so mad as to attempt to march 80 leagues through a drowned country in the depth of winter. They would be off their guard and probably would not think it worthwhile to keep out spies. George Rogers Clark. When Clark is marching his men to Vincennes. He conducts these men, in a sense, like a war party. He gives war feasts, so the different companies will go out and hunt deer and give feasts for one another. They have war dances. And when their spirits seem to be flagging, he paints his face black and leaps into the river with a war whoop to try and motivate his men. Clark pushed his men hard through chest-deep icy water to reach Vincennes. Even as the grueling journey weakened Clark's men physically, it strengthened them spiritually. He noted that they began to feel superior to other men. On February...